To look at this further, I'm joined by Nathan Hultman, Associate Professor at the University of Maryland. And Nathan, thank you for joining us. This panel has in the past been accused of alarmist bias. Have those questions of credibility been resolved? Well, I think that no matter how you look at it, the IPCC is, is not an advocacy organization. It's a, essentially a large committee uh, of scientists around the world, and their job is to synthesize, as the report said, a number of peer-reviewed publications from around the world and try to distill them into a number of brief points that we have various levels of confidence in. The report that came out today is essentially that kind of assessment with a number of statements uh, tagged with a number of estimates of certainty or uncertainty. Um, and whether people take that as advocacy or not is, I think, uh, depends on the, the political context. Indeed. Now, one puzzling feature from the report, how can the slowdown in warming over the past 15 years mm. be explained? Well, right now, that's, uh, it's an interesting question in the, in the scientific community, and there are a few explanations that people are looking into for this. So there is a, a, a trend that shows that if you date it to the most recent high point in temperatures, which was the end of the El Nino in 1998, uh, it was a high period, and then after that, the warming rate actually did seem to slow. Scientists have hypothesized a few different mechanisms that they think might be responsible for this, this slowdown or plateau, as they might call it. Some of the heat may be going into the oceans. Some of the uh, heat may be reflected out from aerosols, for example, over East Asia and China. But unfortunately, up to this point, the, the published scientific literature is too thin to make any assessments about that. So they're calling for additional research into those areas to try to understand those problems better for the next round. Does the technology exist here in the US which would enable us to capture these polluting emissions before they're released into the atmosphere? Well, there are some technologies that can actually capture emissions of, for example, CO2. Those technologies right now are relatively expensive per ton of CO2 that you can actually uh, eliminate from being emitted. Um, but there are also, of course, other options. There's energy efficiency, there are alternative sources of supply, such as solar and wind, and there are, there are even switches to other kinds of fuels, such as natural gas, which has a lower greenhouse footprint than, for example, coal. And how do you think world leaders can be persuaded to overcome their differences and agree on a legally binding arrangement to curb emissions? Well, I think that's up to the stakeholders in their countries. I mean, the, this report does provide a, a substantial uh, strengthening of the science uh, in terms of what we've seen over the last 20 years. The central pieces of science have not really changed in the sense that we're fairly confident. And in this case, it says extremely likely that humans are causing the problems we're seeing. Uh, and what the countries do with that is really up to their individual political systems. And, and this report hopefully can provide some basis for a rational conversation in those places. Nathan Hopman, thank you very much indeed for joining.